thinking about that assumption that the errors are normally distributed, sometimes these errors are called residuals, so um, that's just another bit of terminology to bear in mind. Both expected to be normally distributed and also to have similar variance over the range of variables and predicted values. And usually the way people check this is using something called a residual plot, and that's simply a plot of residuals against their predicted values. I'll show one in a minute. There's also this uh, other type of plot called a normal plot, and that checks the normality a bit more closely, and it's a plot of residuals against their expected values given their ranks, so the values you would expect them to be if they had a normal distribution. So for this example, these were just this plot here. This is a residual plot. So these are the predicted values from the model, and the um, residuals are plotted against those predicted values. There's a bit of an art to sort of interpreting these plots, but what you want to see is that um, there's no evidence of a really sort of pattern in these in this data, and that they're sort of reasonably similarly distributed regardless of what the value of a predicted mean is. So here, there's nothing odd going on. It'll also help you highlight if there's any outliers in the data. I mean, obviously, you're always going to get a lowest or a highest value, but none of these values are sort of really got residuals that are much smaller or much higher than the others. So that was acceptable. And this is the normal plot of the residuals against their expected values, given their ranks. And you want that to follow roughly a straight line. It'll never follow exactly a straight line, but as long as it doesn't deviate too much. So that was acceptable for this study too. This is something that uh, you kind of develop a, an eye for. Some of the packages give actual tests of normality, <coughs> but you need to watch with those because if you've got a small data set, they'll never come out as significant. If you've got a large data set, you might find that they significantly test non-normality, but it's such a small difference from not being normal. It really doesn't affect the results very much. So best to sort of look at residual plots and develop an eye for sort of assessing if there's anything untoward going on. In this example, I was happy that um, for the analysis, the errors were suitably distributed to do the general linear model. Um, but of course, sometimes you'll be in the situation where they're not, the model isn't suitable. So you could then consider a transformation of the outcome variable. You could try taking logs, for example. You could look for the outliers, think about whether you can justify taking them out. It's important to justify taking them out and know that actually that value was wrong. You can't just say, well, it's a bit low, so I'll take it out. If you can't justify taking it out, you could try analysing the data with it in and with it out and seeing if it makes a big difference. And then, of course, if the data, you can't transform them to be normal, you can't sort of get rid of your, justify getting rid of any outliers, you might have to resort to non-parametric techniques. But and we looked at some of those last time, the Wilcox and Rank sum test for comparing two groups of non-normal data. Criscal Wallace was the equivalent of analysis of variance for non-normal data. And Spearman rank correlation coefficient or regression can be used if you've got two continuous measurements where at least one of them's non-normal. But of course, that's a lot more restrictive. We can't kind of allow for structure and fit several effects in a model for non-normal data as we can in the general linear model. But if it's the only thing that you can use because your data are non-normal, you'll just have to you know, work with the simpler tests that you can base on your data.